Hi, it's Bruce here again, uh, working on a, another clinic I'll be giving at a few NMRA um, conventions over the course of the next uh, year. And it's, it's basically modeling tips and tricks for structures, uh, look at everything from uh, roofs to foundations. And uh, I was just working on uh, how to produce the verdigris, and that's how you pronounce that, verdigris, which is the uh, weathered uh, patina that you find, a bluish-green uh, oxidation that occurs on copper or brass metalwork, and how to reproduce that on our models. You use that, or you, you, you find um, copper, in particular, uh, metal roofs, in a couple places. Uh, one is it's frequently, uh, copper was frequently used as ridge caps and for valleys on slate roofs. And so you want to be able to reproduce that uh, color, uh, that uh, verdigris. And of course, if you had a, a copper roof, like I simulated here uh, over the top door on this little tower, uh, and you wanted to weather it so it didn't look like new copper, uh, those are a couple instances of... Uh, where we might, in our modeling, uh, want to reproduce that bluish-green patina. Now, I model in HO scale, but uh, everything I talk about certainly can uh, be reproduced uh, in the larger scales as well. Uh, to, to produce that verdigris, uh, you basically need two things. You need a base color, and then you need a wash of a blue-green color uh, to produce that age, uh, aged look, to produce that uh, blue-green patina. For a base color, I use the same rust mix that I use on just about everything else where I want to simulate rust. I use this on uh, the sides of uh, the rails on my railroad and so forth. And uh, my rust mix is a 50-50 blend of uh, polyscale uh, railroad tie brown and polyscale rust. And although you can't find polyscale paints anymore, uh, if you go to the Micromark catalog and you look at their uh, Microlux paint line, you will find out that they now carry both a railroad tie brown and a rust that is very similar. And if you mix them 50 50, you'd be able to reproduce uh, the color that I use on my base. Also, basically any reddish brown uh, water-based paint would work fine. So that's my base color. And then for the wash, uh, I have found that the old polyscale New York Central Jade Green is perfect. I probably have three bottles of this left, and since basically the only thing I use it for is these uh, washes on copper roofs, uh, it'll, it'll last me my lifetime. But um, since many of you have, do not have the uh, polyscale jade green on your bench, uh, you can find the same thing in a couple places. One is in the craft paint aisles in places like Michael's, uh, Hobby Lobby, or online. If you look at the Americana brand of craft paints, they have a jade green. Also, if you go into Target stores, they have a line of acrylic paints uh, called handmade modern and they have a jade green that's perfect so you don't despair if you don't have the polyscale jade green uh, there are alternatives now depending on what I am what the base is that I'm painting on I may or may not also use a uh, uh, an undercoat a primer if I am working with styrene, then I'm going to paint it with a primer first, and I still have a few bottles of uh, the Polyscale Undercoat Light Gray, uh, which is a fine primer to use. Uh, and again, Micromark also has an Undercoat Light Gray uh, in their Microlux. Or, if the weather permits, I take a rattle can of gray primer out into the garage and just uh, give it that base coat. While I am working on my roofs, I also take a couple different weights of paper. This is a index card stock. 
uh, paint it with the base uh, coat of the uh, rust brown mix and then give it the wash of uh, jade green. And I'll do the same thing with a couple different weight papers. This is about a 40 weight uh, textured paper. Um, I also use an, uh, it's a 40 pound paper and I also uh, have 80 pound paper that will do the same thing. Is And these can be used for ridge caps, uh, valleys, etc. Uh, as you're as you're doing your modeling. So I always have some of these um, Since I opened the paint anyway to do something else. I'll, I'll paint a few of these up and have them ready I am uh, gonna work on uh, This ribbed roofing which I made up from uh, 15 thousandths uh, Styrene sheet and then uh, I use scale two by threes for the battens and I glued them about three foot centers and then what you have on there right now is that uh, undercoat gray on there. And once that's good and dry I would paint it with my rust um, and brown paint mix, uh, reddish brown. And when that dries you're ready to do your wash of the, the jade green. Now here's, here's one uh, the absolute match to this one since I will be making a roof out of this uh, that I've already painted um, with my rust and uh, railroad tie brown paint mix and it's and it's dry and now what I'm going to do is take my jade green paint and just mix it up a little bit I had mixed it up good just previous and I take a soft brush, and this is a quarter inch uh, soft brush with natural fibers on it, and wet it good in water, as plain water, and just tip the end of it with it to get a little bit of the paint on it. And then I'm going to start to run that over my roof. Now you can see it's mostly water, and it's going to accumulate next to the battens. Um, a little more on. Not an exact science. You're just putting a wash on. You want to take as much of it off as you wish. Less is better here because once I see it dry, if I don't like the way it has come, I can always do another coat. Now I'm going to let that dry and that'll probably be fine for what I'm trying to simulate. Um, and that you see how easy it is to uh, reproduce uh, that verdigris that is so common out there in the real world on any roofing that has uh, copper clad. That's it. Thank you.